Welcome to FOSS North, the virtual edition. We would like to thank all our sponsors and partners in this difficult situation. Our gold sponsors, Luxoft and Ansible by Red Hat. Our silver sponsors, ITRS Group and Make It Right. Our base sponsors. Our partner projects, the open source community and the region of Gothenburg. And a huge thanks to our awesome community. This would not have been possible without you. So next up will be Valentin David, who will be talking about the Building Open Container Initiative Images based on Free Desktop SDK. Um, the stage is yours. Hello, everybody. Um, so yeah, my name is Valentin, Valentin David. I work for Kotlink, and uh, uh, my main occupation in my work uh, for the month is uh, to work on Free Desktop SDK. Um, and uh, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, how to build containers uh, with it. image container uh, image for containers. So, what is the free desktop SDK? The free desktop SDK is the runtime for flatpak applications. Uh, so uh, maybe not everybody knows what flatpak is. Uh, flatpak is a is a container system for um, uh, for desktop application for Linux. Uh, so that means that we are the basic runtime. And SDK to build containers for desktop applications uh, for Linux. Uh, Flatpak is not related to op uh, the op open container in initiative. It's a different type of containers. Um, but still, it's it's still some kind of container. So there is some relation, but it's not the same thing. So um, what we aim at to create desktop SDK is not the uh, uh, Docker container or something like that. It's, it's, it's the main thing we do is Flatpak. Uh, on top of that, uh, uh, free desktop SDK, there are other runtimes that are built, uh, KDE SDK and, uh, and GNOME SDK, SDK, which are also for Flatpak uh, application. Um, uh, just a bit, some more information about the free desktop SDK. Uh, we release every year. Uh, uh, for every release, we have two years of uh, maintenance. Uh, we have ABI stability in each release branch. Uh, so we make sure that uh, we are not going to break your application. Uh, we do that by uh, running um, tools that will verify that there is no remove symbols or new symbols so that uh, there is no worry and the uh, runtime can be updated with bug fixes uh, without breaking. We also have uh, some automatic scan for uh, vulnerabilities. So we look at the CV database um, and we uh, uh, verify it against all the sources that we use and see whether we are actually have some vulnerabilities so that we can uh, fix those. The fix is not automatic. We have to do it, but at least we have a report of uh, what we know. Uh, we, we are affected uh, with. Uh, the free desktop SDK is all bootstrap, so we don't. We are not based on any distribution or anything. It's uh, it's just built from the uh, from scratch. Um, and to build from scratch, you still need to have a runtime, and we build uh, every release branch with the release branch, the previous release branch, but there is no element that there are that they um, over. Uh, we support multiple architectures, so uh, Intel, uh, ARM, and we also have experiments in PowerPC, so we have everything that's working, we just don't have the uh, resource to, uh, to say that we support it completely. Um, uh, for the Intel and uh, ARM, so uh, we are we, we are going to uh, we are have already removed the support for 32 bit, but we still keep the 32 bit as a multi arch uh, support, so that uh, um, uh, if you, you can still run 32 bit applications, but you will still need to run on a 64 bit environment. Uh, 
uh, for ARM, we still have the support for ARM, but we might uh, 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 remove it and keep only the ARM64. We'll see. Um, so what uh, does the free SDK contain? It contains lots of things, but it doesn't contain everything. Uh, there is a lot of things on this slide. Maybe uh, uh, there is a bit more than that. Uh, I just wanted to show quickly uh, some names that people can recognize um, uh, there uh, to give you an impression of what it contains. So we are uh, the basic, a basic runtime for uh, desktop applications. So we have lots of things that are done related to desktop. Uh, everything that has to do with Wayland X. We have uh, GTK, SDL2, Carol. We have all the OpenGL, we can OpenCL. Uh, we have audio as well and things like that. But we also have the uh, basic things like uh, we have a C library, of course, uh, a shell, uh, Coriqils, and uh, we, have, we have some compilers some uh, things like that. Um, so it's really basic things, uh, things that are used kind of everywhere. Uh, um, so we are already have that, but we don't have uh, everything. We, we all run have, we have around like 300 and 400 pieces of software there. Uh, just to note first is that uh, the choice of technologies uh, in the free desktop SDK is not an endorsement by the free desktop organization. Uh, just if it's there, it has nothing to do. It just we try to take a selection of making something to work, but it's not like it doesn't mean that you distribution should use those things. That's just uh, independent. Um, free desktop SDK is built on Bitstream. Um, uh, uh, not built on, it's built with. Uh, this is a tool to build. Um, uh, this uh, allows us to uh, build different elements uh, in separate sandbox. What we call an element is every piece of software, for example, let's say GDB, is built separately from GDC. It's not the same sandbox. Um, we It's it's reproducible, so um, we have quite good control on uh, on the sandbox. So we know that uh, every time we build, uh, it should have the same result. Um, uh, this is uh, cached, so uh, that means that if we have already built things uh, once, uh, we don't have to rebuild them. We have uh, servers that can uh, uh, provide cache. So when you have to build all these things, it takes a lot of time. So having a cache uh, can be very good, especially when you have a, uh, uh, something that doesn't compile and you have to fix it and that you have to compile again. You don't want to rebuild everything. Uh, we can also parallel build. So I mean, since we have sandboxes, uh, there's no reason why you can't build uh, several projects in the same time. Um, uh, why do we want to build o OCI images? Um, uh, because, I mean, this is not the goal of the free desktop SDK. The first goal is to provide a runtime for desktop application, and OCI is not for desktop. But uh, we have seen that for us, uh, we need it uh, for all, our own infrastructure. Uh, we, of course, uh, use Docker, for, uh, uh, and we need some images, and uh, it felt like in some places it was better for us to use uh, free desktop SDK and build stream to build uh, our own uh, um, uh, Docker images. Uh, we know that some existing uh, CI um, uh, that build uh, existing applications, um, a desktop application, uh, use uh, 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 Docker or similar uh, um, uh, container system, and um, and uh, we need to. Um, it's a good idea to provide um, Docker or, or OCI images for those systems, uh, so that uh, people can uh, do immigration that is uh, quite smooth. Um, uh, so that they can build uh, their desktop application against 
our uh, free desktop SDK so that it can run uh, safely on the runtime of the free desktop SDK. Uh, then uh, there are some cases where uh, there are some applications that have some different components that are daemon and desktop, and we might think that in those cases, uh, that might be nice to be able to run the daemon in a, a container while you run a flat pack application on top of it. Uh, if you can build both in the same time, in the same system, that might be useful. Uh, so being able to output a flat pack application and uh, OCI image might be useful. Uh, that says it's a very limited uh, thing. There's not that many applications that do that. Uh, and also, uh, if you want to use Bitstream uh, to do uh, 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 OCI images, well, free desktop SDK is probably uh, something we want to use uh, because this is currently the main project that is entirely built with Bitstream. So if there was another project, maybe we could have a look at that, but uh, this is why it is. So I've tried to talk about this uh, before in a different uh, conference, but uh, I saw that it was a bit hard to understand what was Bitstream. So first I will start with uh, a very quick installation of Bitstream. Uh, so it's not really a tutorial, it's very on the surface, uh, but it will be very useful to uh, for you to uh, see what I'm talking about. So I will go with an example example of being building GNU Hello. So GNU Hello is a is a small uh, a project uh, just to show um, it's demonstration how to make a, 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 a open source software, um, and it just prints a hello in the console. It's very simple. But uh, uh, okay, so here we want to make a build some project that will build that and uh, provide. Uh, OCI image for it. Um, so here we have a, a directory structure of uh, our Bitstream project for GNU Hello, which is not the GNU Hello project. But the GNU Hello project will fetch it from either uh, a tarball or from Git. Uh, but here we just have our Bitstream project, which is a project that explains how to build GNU Hello. Um, we have we will have several files, and uh, this is uh, what how we usually uh, arrange our files, uh, but you can do the way you want. Uh, the main thing first is we have a project.conf that describes the project itself, where we will have uh, the, the configuration. Um, and then we will have uh, uh, elements, and you will see that you will see that uh, uh, the elements are files that have the BST extension. Uh, and eventually, you can also have local files, for example, batches and um, maybe local scripts and things like that that you want to import that you don't want to download from somewhere else. Um, in this project, there will be no extra file. There will be only elements. Um, so there is this free desktop SDK.bst uh, element, which is a very special element. Um, it's what we call a junction. And um, I will not show you the same element it's written because it, you just have to copy paste this file. Uh, it's not in, in very important how it's written inside. But it will describe how to fetch uh, the free desktop SDK. So you will be able to access the elements from free desktop SDK. Uh, then we will have our main elements to build uh, our project, hello.bst. Uh, so we will see how hello.bsc is written. This is uh, the file. So first, we will start with uh, describing uh, which plugin we want to use. Um, we we'll stream as a multi multiple plugins, depending on the build system that the project you want to build uses. Here we use it uses auto tools, so autoconf and automec. Um, uh, this not only uh, will uh, uh, the pro the plugin will provide. Um, uh, or we already know how to build the project, so we won't have to explain how to build. But also, it will be useful for in the project configuration itself. So, to uh, if you want to configure all your auto tools project 
to be built in a certain way, you can overwrite things in a project configuration. Then after we would have our dependencies. So there are two types of dependencies in Bilsim, it's build, build dependencies and runtime dependencies. And when you don't specify, uh, for example, here the Bilsim import, it's a both build and runtime. So you see that the dependencies correspond to elements, the BST files, and those are imported from Fidesstop SDK. Uh, you see that we went through the junction element, Fidesstop SDK BST colon, the, um, uh, the element that we want to, to get. If you want to use uh, an element from the same project, you don't have to put the junction in front, you just use the project, uh, the, the actually the name. Uh, this would be useful. This will be used by Bluesim to uh, be able to uh, build a um, uh, sandbox uh, for building, but also uh, later if you want to run the project. Then after we will have some customization for the plugin, so we can overwrite lots of things. Variables is not environment variables. It's those variables are just variables for the configuration. Uh, there are lots of different things. Uh, we will not go into this, but here. Uh, I wanted to uh, say that the bootstrap um, uh, script, uh, I want to pass some parameters um, so that it doesn't try to download on the internet because uh, this breaks the, um, what's called the uh, reproducibility. And then after we will, I will explain, I will describe the source. Um, all sources need to be uh, put there. There is no network access from the build uh, sandbox because we want reproducibility, so everything has to be declared here. Um, and there are a lot of plugins here. It's a Git uh, plugin. This one is a specific plugin that uh, tracks tags. Um, uh, yes. Um, so this is this is how an element is written. And if we want to but to build this element, we can just call BST build uh, and with the name of the element uh, and. Uh, there will be lots of things that will happen, but it was built in containers. It will also try to get some from the cache uh, servers, uh, all the dependencies. If it doesn't find it, will build it for you. So it will just do everything at once. You don't have to uh, worry too much. Uh, then once it's built, you can just run to test it. So BST shell. So you can either open a shell into it, or you can just run the command, and it will print error warnings. And if you want, you can uh, check out the artifact. So make a rootfs, and it will um, make a, a directory with containing all the files of the element and all its runtime dependencies. So it's ready to run. So you can do a change route in there and run if you want. So that was a uh, just quick introduction to Bitstream. Um, let's see. Now I will uh, talk about a bit about uh, container images. Um, so how do we uh, uh, typically build uh, OCI images? Uh, I think often what what is done is uh, you choose a, a base image, and probably it's a distribution. So um, like uh, the best Docker or OCI image for uh Debian or Fedora or Alpine is a very common distribution to use. Uh, and then you will write a Docker file. And uh, the way you will your image will be uh, first you probably uh, use a package man manager to add the dependencies that you need. Then uh, you will sequentially build other dependencies if you don't have uh, things as packaged or you need different versions that what is packaged. And then you build your main project. And then optionally, you have some tricks to uh, reduce the size of the image by just doing multi-stage image. Um, and then after you do some configuration uh, of the, like uh, declaring uh, exposed ports and uh, what command to run, things like that. So here is an example uh, with a hello again. Um, so here I built from Debian uh, because this is what I'm most uh, uh, used to. So uh, I'm not going to explain everything, but uh, this is a Docker file. And it's a very, very simple way to, uh, Docker files are not very advanced. 
it's very easy to understand. So here you have, you see that on the commands are from, run, work here. Yeah, copy and enterprise. So it's, most of them are just running commands. Uh, so this is very simple. Um, so for simple things, it's Docker files are very good. Uh, but when you get something bigger, it, it's not that great. There's also things like here, you will notice that uh, we don't have reproducibility. APT get update, that doesn't work. Uh, this might get new packages and we want to know that um, there is an update and we want to also uh, be able to backtrack on those to be able to, uh, um, for example, uh, bisect uh, issues to understand if, if the bug was introduced by an update uh, somewhere. We want to know exactly what update it, it is, but there is no control there. The key cloning here is not very important because it's uh, there's a checkout that is correct. But if you don't do the checkout correctly, then it's not good. And the bootstrap uh, command here will. Um, with uh, download uh, sources from internet, which is not very good. And it's hard to, to have control on that because the default configuration on uh, to build a Docker file is, uh, is to have a network and we don't really want that. It's not that good. And uh, I come back to the point where, uh, what if you want to build more things in your Docker file because uh, the distribution doesn't provide what you need uh either because it, the package for the library that you want it doesn't exist or or it's a different version that you want or you need a patch um so there are two ways to 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 approach this uh, either you make a package for the distribution that you use or you build directly in the docker file uh, maybe the cleanest thing it would be to uh, package for the distribution, but uh, first of all, package manager are uh, quite complex things. They are very great, uh, but they deal with situations that are really above uh, containers. Like upgrade and uninstall, this is things that are really useless for containers, but you have to take care of when you make a package. Uh, uh, also, uh, most of uh, package manager don't have don't come with a sandbox uh, directly. You usually build directly on the distribution. You can have sandbox, uh, but it starts to be a bit complex, uh, especially when you want to build it several packages uh, separately. You, you, usually, you have to have, have a big infrastructure to uh, to build uh, easily um, lots of packages and make sure they all run so sandbox and everything. And also, the rebuild is not automatic. If you build the dependencies. Uh, do you have to re rebuild the, uh, um, re uh, the refresh dependencies? Uh, you might have also cycle, so it's a bit difficult uh, to deal with. And the other way is to use Docker file. And um, the problem is that uh, first, it doesn't have support for common build system. So you will have uh, to uh, deal with uh, calling lots of commands and maintain those and if you want to change some configurations with lots of files to lots of lines to modify there is no build dependencies between docker files so if you wanted to split into multiple docker files which you can do the problem is that uh, the order of building dependencies uh, you will have to deal externally it's, um, and unfortunately things like uh, docker compose or things like that don't deal with building dependencies um, uh, the cache is a bit uh, awkward because it's per command. Uh, so if you have a complex uh, uh, graph of dependencies, that doesn't work because you will have to build everything that goes after. And also, the as I said, the, the sandbox uh, will still have a network access, so it's not very good for the reproducibility. So the OCI images uh, are layered. Uh, so they are based, uh, they are very close to the Docker file. Um, uh, every command will make a layer. A layer will be just, uh, it's, a, it's a tar file, uh, an archive that will contain uh, uh, the, the new file for the layer and, and, and they will uh, lay over each other uh, to make the final file system. 
And this is very good for uh, allowing um, to uh, optimize a bit of storage and download. Um, it's not the best. I, I hope that uh, OCI will uh, move towards uh, 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 yeah, content-based uh, indexing uh, rather than having this layering. But for the month, we have to deal with this. Uh, and we want to, 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 to have layering. So now we'll go into the real uh, content. Um, how do we did, do we design uh, the images uh, with Bluestream and how you should uh, do if you use Bluestream? So first of all, uh, the, the first idea that you can, people have when you think about it is, uh, uh, well, we have a graph uh, and we need to make layers, which is just uh, like a stack. Um, uh, what we can do is just translate every element into a layer. Then we do a topological sort of all layers, and then uh, each image is just a subsequence. Uh, that doesn't work very well. Um, uh, there are many issues, and uh, too, too many issues uh, will explain. There are more than that, but I'm not completely sure of all the details there. But the two uh, things that I uh, that is important to remember is that. Uh, First, OCI uh, the different implementations. Um, uh, so at first, it was just Docker, and people wanted to make all the implementation, and uh, and that means we will have different implementation. Also, we will have different uh, backend for every implementation. So we have lots of uh, different way things might work. So we we want things to work everywhere. Uh, the the current implementation that I've, I've looked at, uh, they index the layers uh, by the the hash of the stack of all the of, of layers. So how they store a layer is just based on the not the layer itself, but also on the what layer it goes on top of. Um, and this is a problem because we can't use subsequence uh, because uh, if uh, if we don't use the same uh, layers on 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 the bottom, then they will not be indexed the same way. So we will have the duplication anyway. So we will pre download and we will uh, restore uh, separately. Um, and the second thing is that uh, uh, it's not commonly used to have uh, several hundreds of layers. Uh, so. Uh, it's not to expect that everywhere having several hundred of layers uh, uh, of overlaid file systems uh, will actually work and scale perfectly. Uh, so we should avoid playing with this. So we decided to do something a bit more ad hoc, but uh, still help uh, the developers to uh, things. So first, the developer has to decide uh, uh, the sensible layers, uh, thing of uh, what can be reused. Uh, what makes sense. Then uh, the, dev uh, the developer will need to make one uh, layer per uh, one element per layer. So each layer itself makes also an image. Um, and uh, we will use dependencies to copy layers from uh, uh, other image to build layers on top of it. I will explain a bit better with the graph. Uh, I wanted to have generated graphs for uh, free desktop SDK, but uh, this is a full graph and this is not really uh, usable in the presentation. So we'll simplify a bit the graph. Uh, so most of the graph now is on the left, it's a cloud. And then I just extracted uh, some, uh, some elements uh, in the middle, which correspond to the bootstrap platform SDK. And then there's a flat pack application. And out of that, we make uh, 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 OCI images. This is on the right side. Those every of these elements represent a Docker uh, OCI image, uh, but also a layer. And if you follow the dependencies, you will see that, for example, if you go on top of debug OCI, uh, there will be four layers because it will be debug, SDK, platform, uh, bootstrap. So you can see here the example, the bootstrap has one layer, it's bootstrap, the platform has platform bootstrap, the SDK has the SDK platform bootstrap. So uh, very simple like that. Um, we made a plugin 
to make those elements. Of course, so you remember the kind in the in the in the hello um, element, which was uh, auto tools. Uh, here we are make a plugin for OCI, which describes how to build uh, OCI element. But uh, supports OCI uh, specification and also Docker uh, image specification 1.2. It's not Docker 1.2, it's a specification with legacy compatibility. We can uh, also uh, do things like enable, disable layer compression. Uh, there is a configuration and detection. We can add comments in the history. There is a support for image image, but I have not tested that very well. But uh, there is support for that. So I've tried to go to through the world specification and implement as much as I can, because I think uh, most of it is available. Now we come back to our example, uh, uh, and we will write our uh, Docker image, or OCI image in this case. Um, Hello.bst. Uh, first, we uh, select our OCI plugin. Then we will have depend our dependencies. So if you remember, uh, one of the dependencies are to be the layers that we will build on, on top of. And for here, because Hello doesn't use the desktop, um, it's not a desktop application, so it doesn't have to use the platform um, image. We will just use the bootstrap, which is a very minimal um, image of the desktop itself. Um, and then we also need uh, the application that we want to uh, make a layer of. Then we will configure. So first we say it's an OCI uh, image, not a Docker. Then uh, we'll make our image and uh, decide on the architecture. And uh, I don't know, I to explain uh, this just which OS, which architecture will, uh, this is built for. Uh, basic uh, configuration. Uh, then um, we describe which parent we want to use. Uh, this is uh, the layers that we will copy from. And co we will just copy the layers from that OCI image, which is uh, built by this uh, element. Note that uh, you could import an OCI image uh, this bootstrap OCI.bsc doesn't have to be used uh, the OCI plugin. You can take any OCI or Docker um, uh, element. Um, there is the notation is a bit complex because we have parent and element and we just don't say parent and the things. It's because we can select also uh, the index into from multi image. Um, yeah. Well, oh, some image can have multiple read image inside, so we just do that. Then after we say uh, what layer we build on top, um, and here it's hello. Um, the plugin will uh, take that layer and build a, an artifact out of it with all these runtime time dependencies, and we'll make a difference with the parent layer. We'll check out the parent layer and make a difference, and it will build a layer. What's the difference between them? So that means that that layer should contain should contain all that what the top layer has. If it doesn't, it's not a big deal because there would be suppression that would be uh, marked in the layer. So it's it's not a big deal. But if you don't do that, it's probably uh, you will make the user download more file that is actually needed. But in this case, it's fine because the hello the runtime dependencies is actually the bootstrap. Uh, then we can do things like uh, add a comment into the history. Uh, so for in uh, OCI images, you have uh, for every layer, you have a comment that it's like a commit message. And then we can add a configuration. For us, it's a very simple configuration because it's just running hello. Uh, you could also have much more complex configuration. So here we just say the entry point. Uh, oh, I might have a mistake in the P might be a capital letter, I don't remember. Uh, how to build the image? Well, we just do the BST build like we did before. Uh, very simple, and it will uh, deal with building everything. And if you didn't build the application before, it doesn't matter. It will build if it, it will find if it needs to build, if it will use the cache otherwise, if it has already built. If you have changed anything, updated anything, it will find out if it has to build. So there is no uh, worries. 
um, this will be a reproducible build of your Docker image and it will use the cache as much as it can. Um, then you can check out this uh, this uh, OCI image uh, with a checkout. And here, uh, uh, the next option, option that we use is say that we want to export it as a star file. And this star file can be loaded, for example, into Podman. Um, and we have the Docker, the OCI image in Podman uh, imported that we can use and run. So now I will uh, just uh, conclude and wrap up a bit. Um, so what I've shown uh, is that we have um, we can make a free uh, build OCI image with just one tool. You don't have to deal with uh, multiple things, and it's very uh, well. Um, uh, it's targeting very well the uh, 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 building uh, container images. Uh, it's there's no extra thing that is not needed, and there is everything that you need. So it's cached, it's reproducible, it's parallel. So it will uh, try to uh, 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 run as fast as you can, and and uh, and and you will always get the same uh, result. Well, unless you do something uh, stupid, but uh, most of the time it will work. Uh, you can customize your layers. Uh, to optimize the storage and network. So it's uh, a bit better than just importing a uh, uh, um, uh, tower file as just one layer. And also you have your configuration that is in the your bootstream project. You don't have to have configuration anywhere else. You don't have to have an extra Docker file to have extra configuration. Uh, and uh, free desktop SDK provide the basic SDK for most of common system dependencies. Um, we don't have everything, of course. If you want to build, for example, an application for a Node, uh, uh, it's called Node.js, um, uh, uh, we don't have that in FedStep SDK, but we have the element in other projects. If you want, uh, maybe there is uh, some interesting uh, contribution that we can uh, do there and uh, just make a separate project for a different stack of, uh, of software so that uh, you can reuse through junctions for your project, so you don't have to rewrite everything. Uh, Fedest SDK will be the base. We will probably not add anything that is too specific to OCI because this is not the target of Fedest SDK, but it will be a very good base. Um, and uh, if there is other things needed, we we can always spawn a new project that will depend on Fedest SDK. Um, uh, here are some pointers uh, to the if to get more information. Um, so the free test basically the Bitcoin project. Um, the OCI plugin is in an, ex an external project from Bitstream, so you have to uh, download it, download it um, um, separately. But this is something that is a dependency of free test basically itself. So you probably, uh, if you want to build the free test basically, you will have the, this OCI plugin. Uh, here I, I did a pointer to the OCI document, the documentation of the plugin, so you can uh, uh, read what you can do with this plugin. There is more details than what I explained here because it's uh, uh, it would make uh, the talk a bit uh, too um, boring. Uh, then we also uh, publish uh, Docker images, uh, so uh, on the Docker Hub, um, those are built with uh, that plugin. Uh, those are useful if you still want to use a Docker file to build on the Docker uh, for desktop SDK. These are mostly for um, uh, existing uh, infrastructure that want to build a, a flat pack application, for example, but on Docker uh, with a Docker file, that some need to do that. Um, uh, we don't publish the OCI. Uh, uh, images you can build it, uh, however, from the free desktop SDK. Um, the reason is that I don't know about any hub uh, like Docker Hub uh, that uh, can do that. Uh, but I mean, this is the same content, and Docker images and OCI images are very, very similar. It's uh, nearly um, um, they are they are only details are different. It's uh, so they are mostly compatible. 
Uh, yeah, and this work was uh, sponsored by Gothic. Uh, yeah. Then uh, I'm done. Uh, I'm ready for question. Uh, my talk was, I hope, short enough so that you can go for lunch uh, early. Thanks a lot, Valentin. Uh, there is uh, one question that we have on the question system. Uh, how does this fit into a CICD system? Do you have any examples of uh, Jenkins setup? Uh, not Jenkins. Uh, we use uh, GitLab. Uh, so what we have uh, uh, is that uh, what we do is actually uh, the the OCI images that we build for free desktop SDK that the first thing that we did was uh, the images to have build stream because we need to have a specific version of build stream. Uh, so if you have a, 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 a something that used Docker or Podman or something like that, uh, or um, some, uh, let's call the Kubernetes, uh, you should be able to uh, uh, take those images or build a custom image. So we have a separate project for that. I didn't put the pointer. But if you talk to me uh, later, if you contact me, I can uh, give you some pointers. Uh, and uh, uh, then um, what you need to do is just have some um, commands to say, uh, well, to call the BST build and BST checkout and do the thing. So Buildstream doesn't do the, um, um, the uh, distribute, doesn't ship. So if you want to upload somewhere, you will have to use another tool. We don't have plugin for that. We usually don't do that. So usually, what you do is uh, check out the results and 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 send it somewhere else. But uh, yeah, you can. Uh, I think uh, uh, if you need to have OCI image with uh, uh, Bitstream, we already have that, um, and it's written in Bitstream itself. Uh, so if you wanted to have something a bit different because you don't have the same uh, need in your uh, CI, uh, you can um, uh, you can adjust that. Probably even use a junction to take from our project and just build your own image. Uh, but uh, you will have some work to to. You will still to need to have some script to include uh, to uh, to call the the stream. But uh, uh, the building itself will be dealt with by the stream. All right, great. Thanks a lot. And uh, thanks again for uh, an interesting talk. And with that, I would like to thank our speakers, our sponsors, and all our viewers.